In this video, we will continue to create the REST APIs for our Reddit clone application backend. We will create API to specifically add and read new posts. I'm also going to introduce you to a new library called as Mapstruct, which is used to generate mapping logic in our application automatically at compile time. If you want to have a written version of this tutorial, you can check the first link in the description where you can go through the source code and read it at your own pace. So let's have a look at what is Mapstruct. If you go to the mapstruct.org website, you can see in the homepage, it is written that it is a Java library which generates the mapping code, uh, the mapping logic in our application. That means if you have uh, two, two objects and you want to map the data between these two objects, we can use Mapstruct to generate the mapping uh, code by just using some annotations. If you scroll down, you can see the section Mapstruct in two minutes. Here we have an example where we have a car object and a car DTO object. So if you want to map the data between these two objects, first, usually what you will do is create a new car object and then use the setter methods to set the data for each field. And imagine if you have like five or 10 fields or more than 10 fields in the POJO class then uh, you have to write the mapping code manually. So this will be pretty uh, sometimes maybe complex and also mainly it's pretty boring to write this kind of code. So we can just uh, ask Mapstruct to generate this kind of code automatically by just writing the method definition, which takes in the source object as input and we provide the target object type as the written type of the method. And that's all we have to do. Mapstruct will then generate all the required mappings at compile time. And uh, so we will actually see how it uh, generates the code and uh, what kind of code it generates very soon. But I hope you understand what is Mapstruct. So let's go ahead and install this library in our project. Okay, so let's go to the documentation section in the homepage and under the Apache Maven section, you can see the, uh, the library details in the pom.xml file. So let's just copy these details into the corresponding section of our pom.xml file. We need to copy the dependency and the plugin. So the only change we have to do here is to add also the Lombok dependency to the annotation processor paths because Lombok is also a library which generates code at compile time in our project. So if you forgot to add this Lombok uh, dependency, you will get some compilation errors in your project. So, so that's it for the installation. We are ready now to use the mapping mapstruct in our project. So let's start by creating some mappings in our subreddit service. First of all, I'm going to create a new package called as mapper and inside this package, I will create a new interface with the name subreddit mapper. And uh, now let's annotate this interface with at mapper and pass in the component model value as spring. The first method we are going to define is the map to dto method. So this method takes in the subreddit object as input and returns us back the subreddit dto object. So if we compare the fields, we have ID, name, description, post, created date and user fields inside the subreddit. And inside subreddit, we have ID, name, description and post count. So we have some fields which with the similar field names and also types. So Mapstruct will identify and generate the mapping logic automatically for these fields. And uh, for the remaining field, the, the number of posts, this is just an integer field. We have to create mapping from list of posts to integer. That means we have to just return the size of this list. We can do that by creating a new method called as map posts. So which takes in a list of posts as input. And inside this method, we will just return number of posts dot size. So that means we're just returning the size of this list. So we can tell to Mapstruct to use this method when mapping the post field by just annotating, by using annotation called as at mapping with target as number of posts. And here we are using a method to do this, to use the mapping. And here we're using a method to do the mapping. So we will just use that method in the form, in the field called expression. So we just type expression and uh, we pass in the Java. Map. So let's try to compile this interface. If you're using IntelliJ, you can type control shift F9. And now you can check the implementation to see the generated code by Mapstruct. Let's create mappings from subreddit DTO to subreddit entity. We can do that by declaring another method. But in this case, we just add an annotation called as inherit inverse configuration. So this an annotation will create the mappings similar to map subreddit to DTO method. 
but instead this time it will create mappings from subreddit DTO to subreddit entity. And in this case actually we can ignore the post field because we have to set this field when creating the post. Now let's also compile this code and check whether the mappings are created or not. So as you can see, we have generated the mapping successfully also for this method. Now it's time to refactor the existing code by first removing the mapping methods and replacing them with the methods from subreddit mapper. So in the previous video, I forgot to add an endpoint to retrieve a subreddit based on the ID. So let's quickly add this uh, endpoint. Inside the subreddit controller, I have uh, created a method called as get subreddit, which takes an ID of type long. And this is also a path variable. And I've also added the get mapping annotations, which takes the ID as the value. Inside this method, I'm calling the get subreddit method of the subreddit service. And this subreddit so and this get subreddit method is uh, actually retrieving the subreddit based on the ID, and then doing the mapping and then returning the value, um, and then returning the subreddit back to the controller. All right, now let's start our application and let's try to create a subreddit and see if the mapping is working correctly or not. Okay, so now let's go back to IntelliJ and let's start creating the API to create and read posts. The first thing we have to do is to create a class called as post controller. And let's annotate this class with the usual annotations, rest controller, request mapping with value slash API slash posts. And the last one is all aux constructor annotation. So I will just copy paste uh, all the methods which we are going to create here. So the first one is a post mapping, which is of course used to create new posts. For this method, we are taking a post request as input and uh, let's create this class inside the DTO package. And this class contains the fields post ID, subreddit name, post name, URL and description. And the remaining methods in our controller are get mappings. We have one method to read all the posts in our application, one method to return a particular post and uh, another method to return all the posts under a subreddit. And the last method is to return posts which are created by a specific user. Okay, so let's implement these methods inside our post service class. Of course, it's not existing. Let's create this class first inside the service package. And let's add the service and all logs constructor annotations to this class. Now let's create the method save, which takes the post request object as input. Now here we have to create the mappings from post request to post entity. So I have already created a post mapper interface for this. So let's go into that interface and you can see the first annotation we have is a mapper annotation from Mapstruct on top of our interface. And the first mapping method you see is to create a post from the post request object. So to create a post, we not only need the post details, but also the subreddit and the user details. We'll be passing these details through the post service um, class to this method. And you can see here that we have mappings for the fields created date, subreddit, user, and description. And uh, the first mapping for the field cre created date, here I'm using the expression property and passing the value as instant.now. So this value will be mapped to the created date field inside the post object. Next one is the, for the fields user and subreddit. Um, so here the field names are same between uh, for these two objects, that means post request and post. So we can go ahead and remove these mappings because if the field name matches in the source and target objects, then we don't need to explicitly mention the mappings that will be taken care by Mapstruct. 
The last mapping is for the field description. Here we have to mention that the source is inside the post request object. That's why we put the value as post request description. In the same way, we have the other mappings for the method called as map to DTO. And here we are mapping from and here we are mapping from post object to the post response. Object. So the first mapping is for the field ID inside the post response. And uh, here the source is the post ID and uh, followed by the post name, description and URL. And the next mappings are for the field subreddit name inside the post response. But uh, this for this field, we are get using the subreddit, the name field inside the subreddit inside the post class. That means if I go into post, we have the field subreddit. And if I go inside subreddit, we have a name field. So we want to map this particular field to the post response subreddit name field. So that's what we are inferring here through this post, through this annotation, we will be mapping the subreddit dot name field to the subreddit name field inside the post response. The same applies also for the username field. So as I said before, we can uh, remove the mappings whenever we are the source and the target names are the same. So let's do that. Now let's compile this interface and see whether the mappings are generated or not. I will type control shift F9, which is the shortcut to compile in uh, IntelliJ. And if you click on the green button here, you can see the implementations which are generated by Mapstruct. Let us go back to the post service class inside the save method. Let's implement the necessary logic. We have the post request object and to construct the post object, we need the subreddit and user details. For that, we need the subreddit repository and auth service classes. Let's inject these two dependencies to our post service. Now I'm going to retrieve the subreddit from the subreddit repository by typing subreddit repository dot find by name and pass in the subreddit name. So if there is no subreddit with this name, we are going to simply throw the subreddit not found exception. Next, we need the details of the user who made this request. We can get the user details by calling get current user method inside the auth service class. Now we have all the needed objects to get our post object. So, let, so let's inject the post mapper into a class. And after that, I'm going to type post mapper dot map and pass in the post request subreddit and user objects as inputs to this method. And lastly, and lastly, let's not forget to add the written statement to the method. Okay, now we are done with the save method. The important thing here is to add the transactional annotation. Let's add it on top of the class. And after that, we have to implement the method to read the post. And after that, we have to implement the method to read the post by different criteria. That means uh, to get one post, get, so that means to get a single post, to get all posts and uh, to get the post by subreddit and users. I'm not going to bore you by typing all the usual find by methods. So just to make it quick, I'm going to quickly copy paste and the required code. So we have the method get posts. Here we are reading the posts by querying the post repository by ID using the find by ID method. And if there are no posts with that ID, we are throwing the post not found exception. And if we do find the post, then we are using the map to DTO method from post mapper we defined and uh, returning the post response back to the controller. Similarly, we have the get all posts method and for the get posts by subreddit, we have to first read out the subreddit details by ID and then query all the posts by the subreddit. Then we get a list of posts back from the find all by subreddit method, which is defined inside the post repository interface. And uh, here we are going through each post inside the list using streams and uh, mapping the post object to the response post response object. And uh, finally, we are collecting to a list and returning it back to the controller. 
The same thing is happening also here for the get post by username method. So I'm not going to go into much details. I hope it is clear for you what's happening inside this method. Before testing, before testing this, let's go to the post controller class. And you can see that for every method inside this controller, I am wrapping the response we are getting from the post service class with the response entity object. So this is a class from Spring MVC. So through this object, we can return the different status codes for different scenarios. That means, for instance, if we want to create a post, usually if you're creating a resource in a REST world, we should return HTTP status as 201. That means created. We can do that by using the status method. And uh, here I'm passing the HTTP status dot created uh, enum value to this uh, method. Similarly, for the get mappings, we are returning an OK status. That means HTTP status 200. In this, in this way, we can have nicely in this way, we can nicely control what kind of responses we are sending back to the client. So, okay. So as we are through with this, it's time to start up the application and test the functionality we have developed so far. So I will be back once I have started the application. So we are going to test our post API now. First of all, I'm going to log into our app and get a valid uh, JSON web token from the application. Once I receive this token, I'm going to use it to create a post. So here I'm going to throw in some dummy data quickly and call the slash API slash post API with the HTTP post method. So as you can see, we received a 201 response back from the server. That means my request is successfully. So that means my request is successful. Actually, to be honest, we have to return the ID of the post here. So just the user knows what what is the ID of the post he has just requested to create. But we can add it in the next sections. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and test the get functionality. So as you can see, we are able to read the post from our application. So this is it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to create the functionality to vote on the posts and also to comment on the posts. So we are quickly coming to the end of the backend functionality part. And once the backend API is completed, we can go ahead and start building the front end of this application using Angular. I hope these videos are helpful to you. Please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. I will see you in the next video and until then, happy coding techies.